them and in return gives to us his word and his blessing. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ, this holy exchange of gifts between God and humanity that takes place at the celebration of the Mass is called Reditus Exitus. And so anytime we gather to celebrate the Mass, we have what we call theologically Reditus Exitus. We render to God our presence, our praises, and our gifts. And God renders to us in return his word and his blessing. And so in the context of this Reditus Exitus, God's word has come to us. And we have listened to three readings from the word of God contained in scripture. And on the basis of the readings that have been proclaimed to us, I wish to share with you a reflection on God's word. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ, the first reading has come to us from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, 1 to 2, 22 to 29. It is the story of the first council of the church, what we call the Jerusalem Council. Now, last week we were told by our parish priest that Paul and Barnabas embarked on a missionary journey. After the first missionary journey, they returned to Antioch. And whilst they come back to Antioch, a group of Jews come to Antioch and teach the disciples that in order to become a Christian, to be saved, you need to undergo Jewish customs and laws, including circumcision. Without that, you cannot be a Christian. And we are told in the first reading today that there was a dispute between the Christians in Antioch and the Jews who came. Heated argument. And so it was decided that representatives be chosen to go to Jerusalem to discuss the matter and settle it. And so they go, and after the meeting, the council decides that it is not necessary to burden disciples. Let them do only three turns, abstain from food that is sacrificed to idols, do not eat strangled animals, and avoid unlawful marriage. So these are the essentials that those who want to become Christians must undergo. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ, with this, the dispute, the argument, the challenge were settled by the first ever council of the church, the Jerusalem Council. God is good and all the time. And so from this beautiful passage of scripture that has come to us in the first reading from Acts, you will permit me to share with you three important lessons. One, the reading teaches you and I, all of us, that the fact that we are Christians and belong to one parish does not mean that there will be no dispute, no argument. We will not always agree on every single matter, on every single decision that is taken. And our arguments and disputes in our churches, in our parishes, in our groups, in our families and homes, is only an indication to us that even though we are Christians, we are not perfect yet. Even though we are Christians, we are not perfect yet. And we must learn to 
resolve our dispute peacefully. When God calls us to become Christians, he does not call us because we are good, but because he wants to make us good. When God calls us, he doesn't call us because we are good, but because he wants to make us good. And in making us good and perfect, we will have this dispute and this disagreement, but it is a process. When God calls us, he calls us not because we are good, but because he wants to make us good. That is the first lesson. Now the second lesson is this, that every dispute can be resolved amicably. Every single dispute can be resolved peacefully. And we can resolve our disagreements peacefully by doing two things, to sit together and talk, what we call concilium, sitting together. And for those of you in families, you can take a walk. If you do not resolve your dispute by sitting together, just tell your husband or wife, your children, your daughter or son, let's take a walk what we call synodus, let's walk and discuss. And then we need to invite the Holy Spirit into our disagreements. Once we do that, we can resolve our disputes and challenges. That is the second lesson. Now the third lesson is this, that in every church, there is the necessity for orthodoxy, the necessity for orthodoxy. There must be correct teaching. People must not be allowed to go out there and teach whatever doctrine they want. The church must decide on which teachings or doctrines are correct and which ones are not. And that is why the Council of Jerusalem teaches and says that do this or that and that. These are the lessons you and I can learn from the first reading today. God is good. And all the time. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ, the gospel pericope is part of the farewell message of Jesus. Among others, Jesus teaches the disciples that whoever loves me I will love him. My father and I will come and dwell with him or her. Then he says that he leaves them, but the Holy Spirit, the advocate, will come to be with them. And then he says that they should not allow their hearts to be troubled. Do not be afraid. Again, I wish to share with you three lessons from the Gospel reading. One, Jesus reminds us today that we are made for love. We are made for love. All of us are included in the web of love that exists between God, between us, and fellow human beings. We are made for love. And he encourages us to love God and love others. More often than not, we fail to love God and fail to love others because we focus exclusively on loving ourselves. And by so doing, we become selfish. And so for us today to be able to love as Jesus desires and wants us to do, to love God and neighbor, we need to do something. We need to move from the me to the we to the he. We need to move from the me to the we to the he. We need to love ourselves. We need to love others and love God. Move from the me to the we to the he. That is what we can do in order to love as Jesus desires, from the me to the we to the he. God is good. 
and all the time. The second lesson we learn is that Jesus teaches us that he never abandons his people. He says he is going to his Father, but he will send the Holy Spirit to come and be with us. We worship, we serve a living God who never abandons his people. The third lesson, Jesus says to the disciples that do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Now this expression, do not be afraid, if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the entire Bible, it appears 365 times in the Bible. And coincidentally, or accidentally, we have 365 days in the course of the year. It's as if God tells us each and every day, do not be afraid. If you are traveling, God says, do not be afraid. If you are studying for an exam, God says, do not be afraid. If there is a decision you need to take concerning your marriage, God says to you each and every day, do not be afraid. That expression appears 365 times in the Bible. God says to each and every one of us, each day, do not be afraid. Let us pray this morning to God that the Holy Spirit of God will help us to settle our disputes amicably, learn to agree to disagree agreeably, that we will not forget that we serve a God who never abandons his people and that each and every day you and I will not be afraid. May God bless us and may he keep us in his peace. Amen.